So my name is Dacia Graber and I am the rep elect for House District 35, which is Tigard and Southwest Portland. Um, we have kind of the unique uh, circumstance of having three counties in my district. So we are predominantly Washington County, but also um, quite a large slice of Multnomah County and then a tiny slice of Clackamas. So uh, being able to coordinate with the three counties is important as well. The whole of downtown Tigard is within my district, and that's, um, from a business perspective, obviously very important to me. I think uh, Tigard is kind of a model for what small business can look like as we revitalize the downtown and going into the future. So it's, I'm really excited to have those conversations. But, you know, when people think of Southwest Portland, they often think of the West Hills, and even though I do have quite a few hills in my district, this is this is working class Southwest Portland. These, there's firefighters, teachers, nurses, lots of folks like myself that, and I myself live in the Southwest Portland portion of the district. I'm actually the first state rep to live on the Multnomah side in, I think, close to two decades. So, yeah. And the work that I've been doing in the field for the years, I've had sort of this frontline view of people in their most vulnerable moments, whether that was, you know, in medical crisis, um, access to healthcare, drug and addiction problems, gun violence, all these different things have informed, you know, who I am as a community advocate, in addition to being a parent of four kids. And so I, um, I moved to Oregon. I am not an, a native Oregonian. I actually came here briefly for college in the 90s, and then I moved back because I loved it. So in the 10 years I've been here, um, I started taking some of those issues to Salem to advocate for change. And I realized the tremendous impact that taking that lived experience, that frontline experience and talking to my legislators could have on affecting policy change. Um, I started a medical, a free medical clinic for unhoused folks in the Tigard area. And um, I'm on the board of Just Compassion and a bunch of other things. And a few years ago, three years ago now, Representative, uh, now Representative Doherty came out to something I do with uh, women in firefighting. So it's the Portland Metro Fire Camp, female firefighters from all over the West Coast. We get together and we create this free camp for young women ages 16 to 20. And so she kind of shadowed us for the day. And at the end of the day, she said, you know, you've been coming into my office for years. I've, I'm, I'm watching you do this. I see you out in the community why don't you do what I'm doing? And I kind of laughed and she said, no, I'm serious. I'm looking to retire and I think you'd be a, a great person to run for this office. And, um, you know, you don't see a lot of folks like me in politics and it wasn't something that had ever been, you know, it was kind of an aha moment and I came home and casually mentioned it to my husband and he stopped and went, that's a great idea. You should do this. I'm behind you. And here I sit in front of you today. In general, the campaign this year, um, my greatest strength was going to be on the doors because I am the consummate extrovert and I love being out in my community. I love walking. Like my nightmare is having to sit in one spot and stare at a computer. <laughs> so I've lived that for the last year. Um, but when we had to make that transition, you know, our, our campaign had to change as well. And I, um, I've never enjoyed being on phones, and I think every candidate says that, and that's that's just real talk. But early on, we went through our list, and as COVID came down, what we did is we went in and filtered the list. Sorry, I've heard of dog and teenager coming in right now. Um, we we found we looked for folks who were living alone who are senior citizens and we targeted phone calls to reach out to them, not to campaign, but basically to check in and find out how are you doing. And it really transformed that experience on the phones from something like, oh boy, here I would go selling myself to just having these one-on-one -on -one relationships. And some of these phone conversations lasted half an hour. And then we're finding folks that we're dropping off groceries to. And, and it was such a really wonderful way to use that, um, that access and, and do something positive and wonderful with it. And then I have just one more moment and that was uh, anyone who runs for office it is a it is a family affair and there was just one day in the general where we were writing postcards and it was my kids and i and i just realized that for four teenagers to be taking an hour out of their day to sit and write postcards for their mom was pretty extraordinary um, they told me don't get used to it but it was great
My goals and vision have changed and had to flex along with COVID. I would say that before this, I came in with some really aspirational goals of what we could accomplish. And now I, I look at this from the perspective in the background of a firefighter paramedic, of a first responder. And right now, um, the building is on fire. We have people hanging from the windows. You know, we have the most vulnerable folks in our community are all that more vulnerable. We have this looming housing crisis, the, the eviction moratorium if it runs out. We have small businesses that are literally having to hold GoFundMes to keep their doors open for another month. And I think this is an all hands on deck situation on, on recovering Oregon together. So as we knock on wood reach the end of this pandemic uh, as people continue to mask up and take care of each other and we roll out the vaccine you know from a life safety perspective how do we do that the most efficiently how do we do that the most effectively and how do we make sure that people aren't aren't displaced into more homeless situations and that we're not losing businesses because businesses are the lifeblood of the community as well. And a big portion of that for me, I have a strong labor background, is making sure that our frontline workers are protected. So I have, you know, I when I go on calls at work, I'm in a hazmat suit with a full respirator because this is an incredibly dangerous time to be a first responder. My 19-year-old son goes to Kroger or to Fred Meyer and and he, you know, he has a he has a surgical mask, but it's a little bit different and everybody needs to be taken care of and, and they are taking great care of him. That's not a knock. on. <laughs> they have wonderful protocols in place, but every place needs to have that. So seeing the state into that recovery mode and then I think being really innovative in how we rebuild, how we become jobs creators, how we re-energize that core of small business. I mean, downtown Tigard, I use that over and over as an example. That was 10 years ago, desperately struggling. And if you walk through now, it's, it's incredible the diversity of businesses we have. Um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to find ways to throw a life preserver to keep those folks afloat.